Ryan, you're, I gotta let you know, on our bingo update, I have two squares that win. The first one is Ancient Stirrings finds a land that makes two mana, two or more mana. And the second square that wins is a storm count of eight. So one of these players is going to have to win. I, I don't know which one I'm going to hit, but one of them's got to go. Yeah, but I'm probably going to check my turn three Tron box. So uh, what do you think about that? Well, I think I get to just check my turn three win box when you do that, right? Yeah, often enough. <laughs> not, not really in this matchup, though. No, that's actually true. And looks like a mulligan here from Medrano. Yeah, Tron is definitely one of those decks that is going to try to mulligan to a hand that has turn three Tron locked up or has a really good shot at it. So that makes it way harder for it to have one of those hands that beats Storm. You can really beat up on Jund with a four or five card hand, but Storm puts way too much pressure on you. Yeah, pretty stock list here from Adrano. The two main deck, two flex slots has have been devoted to two copies of Relic of Progenitus. Uh, on the fourth O Stone, only one Ugin. Yeah, the two other relics are in the sideboard, so there'll be a lot of that in the match anyway. And Adrano's keeping on five. Caleb starting off on Serum Visions. Looks like turn two Baral. Especially when you know you're up against Tron, that one's just going to get run out right away. Right. Some good other holdings, at least one Mana Morphos as well. Pretty easy to get going from there. Despite a all to five, Adonis may have that turn three Tron. We see Expedition map off Urza's Power Plant, but will it be enough on the draw? That remains to be seen. Here is Baral from Caleb Shear. Better get that Relic online now. And it is Forest and Pass. Close, but not... Caleb has Not two quite. Manamorphos and a Gifts uh -oh. on Given. It is very likely that they had the turn three win here. Oh, you're playing Tron. Let me <laughs> hold on. One, get out the counter. Spell number one, make blue red. Draw. Another Manamorphos. I hear those are good when Baral's in play. This is a fine card. Storms up to two, makes another red, draws a card. Yeah, the, the effect yeah, that you get F when you cast yep. Manamorphose controlling Baral is just not remotely printable. Yeah. Oh, no, don't. Oh, no way. Hey, don't F6 Adonis. When he passes turn, you want to crack your map. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> you have to crack your map before f 6 Come on. Another Manamorphose. And finds a Desperate Ritual, so... Yeah, this is this is one of those easy mode games where you just yeah. have the scripted uh -huh. gifts ungiven for past and flames, get your rituals, uh -huh. track down your grape shot, win the game very easily. Five spells. You have a three mana gifts, yeah? I, oh yeah. There we go. I'm playing bingo. Uh gifts ungiven for three mana, that's a square of mine. You're about to get bingoed this turn, though. Yeah. That's, that's why I pointed it out. That's, oh, that's very gracious yeah. of you. It's like while you're comboing someone out, and then you're like, hey, you know, don't forget to gain that life oh, or something. I think Storm's actually at five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pyretic Ritual for Caleb. Passed in Flames. And he's got to cast one more. Storm count of eight. Boom. Congratulations. Boom, we did it. I'm also preemptively, we had this, there's a turn three win square. I think I'm going yeah, to go out on a limb and say that's going to, that happened. Not even a second bingo, so. At this point, Caleb's casting Passion Flames. He's going to recast all those cards in his graveyard. Eventually, actually right now, one of them is going to be Gifts Ungiven. So that'll find him the Grape Shot he needs. Plenty of mana available to just flashback Passion Flames. That gives the Grape Shot flashback. 
Is he, getting, is he getting a stack that just runs up the score? Gifts, Grape Shot, Past and Flames Ritual. That makes sense. He definitely has more than enough. And when, uh, is just going to pick him up. Yeah. He, he's seen enough. This, this kind of iterates for a while. You just get more mana. You have access to all of your spells because you can flash back past in flames. So already an abundance right. of rituals available. Easy enough. Good news for Adonis is that this actually improves for him out of the sideboard. Caleb doesn't have too much for the matchup because it's largely a, just a good matchup. But Nature's Claim, Thought Not Seer, Thrag Tusk, Spatial Contortion, and those last two relics uh, are in the sideboard for Adonis. Now, we know he's going to go for the relics, but perhaps more. Yeah, so the relics are a slam dunk. You probably have to reach for Spatial Contortions just because you want to have an answer to these mana creatures. You need to buy some time to get set up. You just can't sure. play magic as quickly as Caleb can. I don't really mind the Thought Not Seers. Those could actually be pretty impactful. Fast Clock gets a card out of his hand, which seems like you need to do here. Yeah, if you're able to buy time with Relics and Contortions when you get up to four mana casting the Thought Not Seer, that, that can be worth something. You might turn some of your more expensive payoffs into Thrag Tusk as well, though that one's kind of mopey. If you cover the graveyard, though, you make it really hard for Caleb to grape shot you here. I'm going to board up for game number two quickly here. Guilds of Ravnica, been on sale recently, still the newest set. You can still get orders today from StarCityGames.com. We have booster boxes, cases, and bundles. Those are currently for sale on StarCityGames.com slash GRN. Also, starting in a couple days, we have the Ravnica Guild Kits. Those are available for pre-order, and they ship November 2nd. Now, these are one for each of the five guilds in Guilds of Ravnica. These are actually a mix of Ravnica cards from all three Ravnica blocks. Yeah, cool assortment of cards, new and old. As, as much as I remember it like it happened within the span of a year or two, original Ravnica was some time ago. Yeah, we have the original Niv-Mizzet there. I think the second Tristani, Izoni, the Golgari one, that's the newest set. Yeah, Atrod is a new one. And the Aurelia is from the second time around. Yep. Right? It yeah. was Razia was the first Boros leader, and then it was Aurelia. Right. Those are available for order now. StarCityGames.com slash GK1. Remember, remember when Aurelia, not Razia was one, like, people play Oath and Vintage, and Razio was one of the best creatures you could get. Well, it has six power. Yeah, that was a, <laughs> Magic was a different game then. Oh, yeah. What are the best two creatures in Magic? Well, it would be Razia, Boros Archangel, and uh, Akroma, of course. I was talking to some people that are pretty big on reanimator strategies recently, yeah. and we were talking about the pre Gristlebrand era, and man. Yeah. They used to play some very different creatures in those decks. How many, yeah, it just, then you get the game right. How many creatures have since been printed that are better than Akroma and Razia? It's like 20, 30? Yeah. Uh, They've they, fallen a ways down the list. Well, when Shards of Alara came out and they printed Imperial Archangel, that right. was such a big deal for Reanimator. It has Shroud. It's like, whoa, that creature, you can never take damage. It has like nine toughness or something. <laughs> they hadn't seen Grizzle Brand yet. <laughs> it was such a different time. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Both players are on seven for our second game. Adonis can see if he can put some more together. Well, not not right away. He's going to take a mulligan. Jeez, even before Gristle Brand, Elish Norn was a huge update. Right, so yeah, we're, we're on Elish Norn. This one's Shaildred, Sun Titan. Not even only cost six, but it's probably it's better than all these other ones. There was a cool point in Vintage where it was reasonable to play Oath, and there was this Rune Scar Demon Oath deck. From and the you would, core set. You, yeah. <laughs> so it's a seven mana six six flying demonic tutor. All right. And you would Oath into that, and then you would tutor up Time Walk. <laughs> this is so. And you take so much more. Turn. Why don't you just get Grizzle Brad? <laughs> This is so much more work. It was a time before that car was printed, if you can oh, believe okay. that. If you can okay. believe that. And then you would you would time walk and then you would oath into your second Rune Scar demon. This is so this is awesome, but and also you would so much work. Shoot her up a regrowth and get your time walk back. 
<laughs> this was the best thing we could do. It was, w <laughs> it was one of the things. Red Acroma, when that was printed out, that was a nice one. Yeah, Red Acroma, Red Acroma is really interesting. I just got a second bingo off that. Just one, just one. No, proud of you. We're, we're running it up. You've really upped your game. Yeah. I found Urza's mine. Turn one ancient stirrings from Adonis. Caleb starting on an island. Adonis does have that uh, relic of progenitus in his opener. Looks like he can take a turn off before he needs to have it online, though. He'll use that Sylvan scrying. Yeah, there's really no risk of getting comboed on the second turn of the game. No, and this should be his third Tron piece. He finds Urza's tower. The mine's in play. He has power plant tower in hand now. Yeah, so it'll be a turn four Tron. Which is fine. That relic should buy him some time. Yeah, the hand not keepable because it's his turn four Tron. That relic is really doing some of the heavy lifting here. Yeah, but we're going to just run out of Baral again. Not too bad. If Adonis can't remove it, there are situations where Storm doesn't need the graveyard to combo. They can just draw 20 cards and grape shot you some. They can also bounce your relic. That's, <laughs> that's rude. Another option available. I'll see what Caleb can do. There is the relic and a pass from Adonis. He has turn four Tron, but will that be enough? Sheer hits for one with the Baral. Good attack. Solid. And maybe we'll start something here. Is it going to be a ritual? It is. Here's Manamorphos. Yeah. We're going to go for the double turn threes from Storm? Just might. What do you mean? Casting the Manamorphos is kind of a free roll. <laughs> yeah. Maybe something nice will happen. Looks like we have two more, another Manamorphos. I think we have two more red, uh, red, two more red rituals. Pieces of the puzzle. Uh, so, Ryan, okay, he might be able to just go off without using his graveyard at all. Pyretic ritual spell three. You guys, I have a question here. As far as I can tell from watching a lot of Caleb here on the tour, pieces of the puzzle is good in every matchup. It's less good in game one. I think I know where you're going. Okay, no, no, no yeah. You, you generally bring it in. Part of the concern is that your opponent will interact with your graveyard, and that's exactly what's happening here. It's less powerful than Gifts Ungiven because it doesn't always find what you need. But you know, in a situation where you're not expecting to be able to pass in flames, then the pieces is going to be more powerful. Slate of Hand from Caleb finds Unsubstantiate and Pyretic Ritual. Now this is interesting. Does he want to swerve course and try to bounce the Relic, or is he just going to try to cast 20 spells? I believe he has two Grape Shots now. Right. Desperate Rituals, the sixth spell. With two Grape Shots, you don't need to do too much work. No. With the Graveyard, at least. Another Desperate Ritual, spell seven. We need a Grape Shot for nine and a Grape Shot for ten. So just one more different spell. Here's Goblin Electromancer. That is one more different spell. Grape Shot for grape nine. Grape Shot for nine. All right. Donis goes to ten. Grape Shot for ten. For ten. Is With that lethal? With unsubstantiate backup? Probably yeah. lethal. You can try to Nature's Claim it. In response, exile the yards, draw a card. Uh, now he can't do anything, and that's going to be the handshake. Caleb plays six turns, and now he is at 9 0. Easy. Storm's a good Why deck. Why did he even play Dredge last weekend? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs>